Greetings and salutations gamers, my name is Kyle, also known as Gamers Weekend, and welcome to a bit of a different video for today. I get asked quite often, honestly, um, what my favorite boss is from all the different Dark Souls games, and I don't think I'm going to stop the flow of those questions by making this video, but it does make me kind of realize that people have been kind of interested in like what my opinion on all of the Dark Souls bosses as a whole is, because honestly I make these challenge videos all the time. And when I make these challenge videos, I only really get time to talk about like, yeah, this fight was fun or this fight I had to use this mechanic and things like that. But I've never really like taken the time to really give my own thoughts and opinions when it comes to the Dark Souls bosses. So I figured why not? If, if you guys are interested in knowing what my opinions and all that is, then uh, this is your video. I'm going to be ranking all of the Dark Souls bosses, uh, the Dark Souls 1 bosses, that is. Um, in tierless fashion, so we're going to be doing putting all the bosses into different tiers, and then after that we'll get into the more nuanced, like, oh, do I think this boss is better than this one? So we'll we'll do tiers first, and then we'll order how I think each tier is going to go, because I think that'll be a fun way to put together today's video. So I went out on Tier Maker, and I found a nice little template that was made by the community. Um, that put together all these nice little images so we can sort out all the bosses. I know it may not be the easiest thing to see if you have like a tiny phone screen or something like that, so don't worry, we'll, we'll definitely be naming the bosses as I grab them. So I think the first thing we should do is actually rename all these letter tiers, uh, because as much as the letter tiers are great, I think it's better if we kind of like define what I think each tier is going to mean. Um, and Tier Maker lets us actually rename these, so... That's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, by the way, this is a template that I just found online. Um, you can find for yourself. I'll even leave a link in the description of the video on how to find this template if you feel like making your own. Um, it lets you even take pictures and stuff. Like, you can grab a screenshot of it and maybe you want to come share it in the Discord or something. And we can, uh, we can all talk about why Capra Demon is the penultimate boss of Dark Souls. Either way, though, I think we should go ahead and take some time to rename each of these tiers. So, obviously, let's start with S tier. Um, and I've arranged my microphone to be in a weird way, so now I'm going to be typing with one hand. Here we go. Um, I'm going to rename this to the... As my doorbell goes off. So, I'm going to go ahead and start off with this S tier. And I'm going to rename it to the... Um, uh, we're going to rename it to the Amazing tier. So, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are the boss fights that I think... Like, I think of and I go, man, I would replay the game to play those boss fights. Like, these are like the standouts, right? These are like the, we all know what this tier means. It's the best of the best. Um, A, I'm gonna rename into still great. Um, these are the fights that I'm not like necessarily like wanting to replay the entire game for, but like I look forward to these boss fights, right? Like these are fights that like I like to do you know, I, I think that's a fairly easy way to say is these are the fights that like I look forward to. Like these are the ones I'll replay the game for. These are the ones that like I'll I'll enjoy while I'm playing the game. But like I don't necessarily replay the game. Like it doesn't have that kind of like extra factor to it. Uh, we're going to rename B into still good. Um, these are fights that I think are fine. I think they are still fun to do um they, they're not necessarily like a super joyful experience but i don't necessarily dislike them like i still think yeah that's a that's a fairly good boss fight like i i don't hate it i don't dislike it but like it's still a good time to do it right it's not like a boss fight that i'm like dreading doing um which kind of brings me to see where which i'm gonna call the the meh tier um these are the boss fights that i feel nothing about I think this tier encapsulates the boss fights that still function, but like, I don't care for them really. Like, they're get yeah, they're fine, I guess. Um, I, I kind of just feel nothing about these fights. And then we'll go to D, which I think the best way to do this is delete. These are fights that I think I I dread doing, and I wish were removed from the game. That <laughs> there's not going to be very many here. I, I promise you. But there there are some fights that if I think the game is better without it, it's going into this tier. That That's just how it's going to be. So I think we've got all of our tiers set up here. Um, so once again, we've got amazing. 
which is I, I'll replay the game for it. Still great, which means I'm going to have fun with it. Still good means like it's nice, but nothing special. Meh is like, yeah, it's, it could probably use some improvement. And delete means I want it removed from the game. Um, like, I just don't want this fight in the game. So yeah, I think this is going to be a good way to separate these things out. Um, I will say that I did kind of do this with some of my mods in a Discord call not too long ago. Um, we had a bunch of us in a call, um, and it was quite funny having all of us. I think there was like some of the mods and some of the other friends I have in Discord. There was like nine of us in a call all like yelling at each other, debating what boss goes where. And that was a lot of fun, but we're not, we're not going to go back to that. Today's just, uh, today's just my take on things. So let's go ahead and go over these as we see them. And just because I put something in a spot that doesn't make it final, there's going to be some fidgeting, but. Starting off with four kings. Um, I want to put four kings in still good. Um, I think four kings is an interesting boss. I like it conceptually. I think it works really well as kind of like a DPS test boss. You don't get a lot of that in the Souls games, at least not off like off the top of my head. You don't really get that. Most bosses are kind of like skill checks in one way or another. Yeah, most bosses are skill checks in one way or another, but the four kings are kind of like, they're kind of different where, yeah, there is skill acquired, like acquired, wow, skill acquired, skill required to fight them, but they're not necessarily like anything super special. Like as far as skill goes, it really is mostly a DPS test unless you're going in like super lightweight and they're just absolutely shredding you. I don't think I necessarily look forward to the four kings. I think, I think they feel that they're lacking something. Um, something about the fight just doesn't feel super dynamic. It kind of just feels like I'm fighting a bunch of really cool enemies rather than I'm fighting a boss. There's almost something that kind of feels like fan mod, like fan made mod about them. Um, really good fan made mod, but like, I don't know. They don't have, to me, they, they I just feel like they lack that polish that some of the other bosses have, <laughs> which brings us to... Uh, the Gaping Dragon. Gaping Dragon. Um, I, I'm struggling between where to put him here and here. Um, let's, let, let, we'll come back to Gaping Dragon. Let's go to Sif first. Uh, Sif I'll put in the Steel Grape. I think Sif is a pretty good boss fight. Um, obviously there's some optimization issues with like Xbox where Sif's sword causes the game to lag immensely. Um, the frame rate just gets awful. But I think Sif is a cool boss. Um, I think that it's really cool to see a very fast yet hard hitting boss, which is not something that you see a lot of. Um, typically, if something hits really hard, it's not that fast in this game. So it's kind of cool to see like the glass cannon boss, uh, which we will see some like rather squishy bosses. And it does serve to some of their detriment, but I think Sif is definitely a good example of how to do a really cool like glass cannon boss. I also just think that Sif is like the cutscenes are really cool. Uh, the arena is really big, which is good because Sif likes to move around a lot. Um, I think if Sif was in a smaller arena, I would like this boss a lot less, but I really like how big the arena is for Sif here. Um, and I really just like the aesthetic of the whole boss fight, to be honest, like I think Sif really fits in the Darkroot area. I think the Darkroot area is like the perfect place for Sif. I honestly can't imagine any other area in the game that I'd want to put Sif, except maybe Firelink. Like that kind of aesthetic, which kind of matches Darkroot. So I don't know. It's not netting him any bonus points, but there's just a lot of things I like about Sif. That being said, I don't like love Sif to death. I think Sif is cool, but I think he's pretty cool. Um, Gwyn, 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 Gwyn. Honestly, I'd put Gwyn. Uh, what do I feel about Gwyn? I'm struggling between still good and meh, to be honest. Um, if we're operating off of just boss fight mechanics alone, I think Gwyn would go into the meh tier. Um, he has a total of like, 
Let's see. Quick combo, heavy combo, stab, grab, jump. It's like five different attacks, but you rarely see most of them. It really only feels like he has three attacks outside of that opening jump. I don't know. Gwyn kind of feels... Gwyn's fight just feels eh, to be honest. Um, I will say, considering Atmosphere, though, I think Gwyn's soundtrack is one of the best boss fight soundtracks in the series. Um, probably in my top five. Um, I, I do think Aldia's track is better. I know that's kind of a... I know I have a lot of hot takes, but I, I do like Aldia's theme a little bit better. Um, but that being said, Gwyn's track is still one of the best in the series. Um, and the overall, like, story and aesthetic behind him, you know, the, the burnt the burnt lord who is like just a shell of his former self inside of the kiln of the first flame it is a really cool like it's a really cool fight thematically but like i can't say i really feel excited ever to fight gwyn like gwyn always just kind of feels like the last thing i need to kill to win the game um and i think that's gonna put him in like the met tier for me Iron Golem. I like Iron Golem. Um, what do I want Iron Golem? Do I think he's amazing? No. Do I think he... Do I look forward to fighting Iron Golem? Honestly, kinda, yeah. I think Iron Golem is a fun fight. I think he is... I think it's really cool the way they implemented the mechanic that you can knock him off his own ledge. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword where, like, he knocks you over the edge constantly... But then, like, there's something about, like, when you you stagger him and you notice he's losing his balance. And then you knock him over for the first time. And you go, if you didn't already knock him off the edge, you as the player go in your head, wait a second. I could probably knock him over the ledge. And you can tell that that was just the way the game was designed. Um, I think also that <laughs> there's something really fun about most of the weapons that you get up to this point are probably going to be pure physical. And if you get up to him with, a, like, a pure physical weapon and you hit him and just watching the amount of damage you do just do nothing. Um, especially if you're playing, like, Uchi Katana or, like, Scimitar or something like that. Like, dex builds, my god, do they hate Iron Golem. <laughs> but I do think Iron Golem is a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy Iron Golem. Um, do I think he's, like, a pinnacle Dark Souls 1 boss? Not by any stretch of the imagination. But I think he is still pretty fantastic. Um, I think I think that's gonna kind of help me decide where I want I want to put Gaping Dragon as well. I think Gaping Dragon is a really cool looking boss. His design is great. Um, his move set is somewhat cool, I guess. Um, my only problem with Gaping Dragon is he feels way too easy. Like, he's so intimidating and cool the first time you fight him, and I think the shock factor of Gaping Dragon alone puts him in the still good spot. But my god, is he, like, the easiest boss in the game to just bully, aside from maybe, like, Stray Demon, if you know the strat for Stray Demon, but... Yeah, I, I don't... I don't think Gaping Dragon really gets anywhere above the still good tier, just because, like... His moveset needs help, man. But I, I will say, just for the sheer impact of, like, having a really cool cutscene and just providing this awe image over the character of just, like, this massive behemoth that rises up from the sewers. It's just really cool. I really like Gaping Dragon. At least, I really like the image of Gaping Dragon. Not the... The actual fight is kind of, like, eh, it's kind of simple. His moveset's kind of whatever. I think if his charge attack wasn't so easily exploited um like i know in the original prepare to die edition there's a glitch where he can like stand up and then like instantly glitch back into being on all fours and charge like imagine if there was no like delay between him going on all fours sitting there for a moment and going for the charge like imagine if he just like leapt across the field in like a trample fashion i think that'd be really cool um like, if, if he operated more on that kind of basis, which would make it somewhat more viable to stay close to him. Not, like, always viable, but, like, you know, if there was more incentive to not bully him using the size of his arena, then I think I would like him. I think he would go into the great tier, but, yeah, his fight's just too easily exploitable. Moonlight Butterfly... 
I don't have a lot to say about Moonlight Butterfly, to be honest. Uh, Moonlight Butterfly is cool. It's a gimmick. I mean, it's a gimmick fight. Not necessarily a great one. Um, I like the idea that she heals. Um, but it's so little that I don't think anybody really notices, so... Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about Moonlight Butterfly. Um, good soundtrack. Cool aesthetic. The gimmick is alright, I guess, but I don't really feel anything about it other than that. Nito is also kind of meh, to be honest. I think he'll be like, I think Nito will probably be the top of meh. Uh, Nito as a fight is, I mean, he's, he's what Capra Demon was probably attempting to be but never really achieved. Um, he is a big bad guy with a bunch of ads, and all the danger comes from the enemies. That's it. Um, I like that he can inflict toxic. That does make his attacks have a bit more of, like, urgency to them. Uh, I think that's kinda it. I mean, his attacks, it, you really, you almost have to be trying to get hit to get hit by Nito, aside from like his sword dance. Which by the way, why not give him the full Gravelord sword dance? Why just give him like the one blade? Like, I feel like Nito should have the full Gravelord sword dance. I feel like that would have been way cooler. Yeah, I don't really think Nito has a lot going for me. It's really hard for him to hit you in the first place aside from his two magic attacks, which I would have altered his magic move set anyways. I mean, I think the potency of them is fine. I just would have altered them thematically. Um, but otherwise, I think Nito's a pretty cool fight. But otherwise, I think Nito's kind of a whatever fight. You know, like, his sword attacks barely hit you. His hitboxes are weird. And the most annoying part of it is the skeletons. <laughs> Which, again, Tank and Spank just kind of ruins. Oh, look! The first boss fight. We're going to be chucking up into the amazing tier. That's, uh... It's ONS. We love ONS. ONS is like classic Dark Souls. That this is the this is the fight that defines Dark Souls. Really, I, I, what is there for me to say about this fight? There's not a lot really that you can say about ONS that hasn't already been said. They're a really well designed boss fight. The summon for Solaire. Uh, I think this is one of the cases where I will talk about the summons. I think the Solaire summon for them is really cool. Um, I don't think that it's 100% necessary, and I do like the idea that there is two alternate ways to end the fight, either with, uh, Super Smo or Super Ornstein. I just really like this fight, you know? It's, it, it's a lot of fun. You feel so, like, you feel so achieved once you beat them, and they really kind of feel like the... the gatekeepers, if you will. Like, if you can beat these two, you can beat Dark Souls. Like... They really feel like the true test for new players. And especially when I'm doing like challenge runs, which I don't want to include challenge runs as much, but I think this is a good point. Especially when I'm doing challenge runs, I spend so much time asking myself, okay, am I going to be ready for these two? And I think that really speaks volumes about like how good they serve as like that mid game test for the player. Yeah, I think that I don't think I really need to say too much more about them. Um, really fun boss fight. Um, pinwheel. Here's the thing. I actually like pinwheel. I think I okay. I'm gonna put him in the meh tier. Uh, let's put him like right here for now. Uh, I'm gonna put him in the meh tier for now, just because. I actually think Pinwheel has a lot of potential as a boss fight. I just wish he was tankier. I, I literally think all you need to change about Pinwheel is make him tankier. And he's a good boss fight. Like, if you'd be surprised how many people on the internet don't know he technically has a phase 2. Where he spams clones in the rooms and it suddenly becomes really dangerous because you could be hit by like randomly by like 7 fireballs and it just insta gives you to oblivion. Not a lot of people know that. And I think if Pinwheel... I think if Pinwheel just had a ton more health, 
like maybe even just like 1.5 or double his health, he would be a much better fight. Like if you want to get the full pinwheel experience, I recommend actually going and fighting him like straight out from when you arrive at Firelink. Just like go do if you'd like have the ability to go do the speedrunner drops down through the catacombs. And then just run down and fight pinwheel. It's so like fighting him at a low level is a much different experience as like when fighting him even past like the gargoyles, honestly. Like it, it's a really cool experience being able to fight him with like the phases and actually having to like manage the clones. I think it's really cool. So I think if with some adjustment, he could be still good or even the still, you know, what? let's call this the, the great tier. Let's not even call it the still great. Let's call it the great tier. There we go. Um, yeah, I, I think I almost want to put him on still good, but unfortunately he just gets run over. Yeah. Gets the short end of the stick, but I, I, I do like Pinwheel. I want to put Seath in the great tier. Um, I actually really like Seath. The only boss, I think, unless I'm missing something. Aside from, like, gravity with, like, arenas and stuff. The only boss with, like, a true insta-kill mechanic with curse. I think Seath is really cool. Um, the crystal mechanic is, like, it's there. It exists. It's kind of whatever. Um, but I really enjoy Seath. I think he is a great way to do a magic style boss where he's just creating these waves of crystals. And the real way to fight him is just manage the crystals, like managing spacing and stuff like that. I think once you figure it out, you feel like it doesn't take a lot to figure Seath out, but you do kind of feel big brain once you do figure him out, like how to really fight him. And I think he just is, like, a really cool fight aesthetically as well. I think of the four lords. Let's see. Who are the four lords? It's him, four kings, bed of chaos, and Nito. Yeah, I'd say Seath is probably my favorite of the four lords. Next up is Asylum Demon. Ooh. Okay. This is going to be maybe a bit of a weird take to some people, but he's going straight up into the amazing tier. Purely because I think Asylum Demon is such an iconic boss. I think Asylum Demon is more than an iconic boss. Like, when people think Dark Souls, like, when you think, oh, new players playing Dark Souls, what's the first thing you look forward to seeing them see? Is the reaction to the Asylum Demon showing up, right? Like, everybody remembers the moment of when you first opened those double doors and you walked forward, saw the Asylum Demon drop down, and think, oh my god, the game really is as bad as I heard. Like, everyone rem like everyone's probably had that moment. If you, if you hadn't, you probably had something kind of like it. Um, Asylum Demon is just, he's such an iconic boss. And going up and getting the plunging attack off of him, you know, it fills you with that adrenaline, especially on your first run through. Um, and then from there you kill him and when you finally beat him, you like, you get that great feeling in your bones like, man, I just beat a Dark Souls boss. Like, I'm in it. And he's such a, he's such an iconic boss. I think he is next to ONS as one of the most defining bosses for the series, right? Because yes, Demon Souls did the whole thing where there was a boss at the beginning, but you died to the boss and moved on. In Dark Souls, you conquered your first boss. And I think that's really telling to the whole series. I think it really started something in the series. Like, it made a standard that, unfortunately, as much as I love Dark Souls 2, I, I love Dark Souls 2 to death, it didn't upkeep that. But then I think Gundir in Dark Souls 3 really was like, everything about Gundir is like based upon asylum demon in my mind like that concept that premise was derived by the impact that asylum demon has had on the rest of these games and yeah i, I think that's just all i really have to say about him he's just great which is where we get to stray demon um i'm gonna put stray demon in i'm actually gonna put him in the great tier um he is copy paste which i know uh copy paste is kind of a weird topic but i think stray demon is the good version of copy paste where you take an earlier boss 
you expand their move set, change up some of their mechanics, and you get a different experience. I think there's something really cool about revisiting the asylum and fighting the more juiced up asylum demon. Um, that's a lot of fun. It doesn't quite have the same impact, but I do like that revisit idea where you're like revisiting a boss from the past. And this time it's like, it almost feels like the full version of them, if you would. Like you fought the tutorial version and you come back and the first time you get hit by that magic blast, you are just like, oh crap, they mean business now, you know? Um, and I really like that that idea when it comes to him. Um, I also really like that he is kind of easy to fight once you know how his mechanics work, um, but not easy in a way that feels disappointing. Like, yes, if you know how to abuse the, like, his attack mechanics and staying behind him and how to abuse every option, then yes, he is very simple, but not in a way that like feels it detracts from the boss fight. It feels simple and easy in a different way than it was for Gaping Dragon. And this time it feels like you're, you actually have some modicum of skill being required to beat him as compared to Gaping Dragon, which is kind of like, you almost feel like you're abusing the moveset. Taurus Demon is another one that I'm going to put into the great tier. Um, I think Taurus Demon is pretty fantastic, to be honest. Um, I think that him showing up as an enemy later, uh, and this is something that we're going to come back to when we get to Capra Demon, but I think him showing up as an enemy later, I would take off more points about him being an enemy than I would about a boss. I know some people are like, oh, if a boss shows up later in the game as an enemy, it takes away from the original boss fight, and I think it's the opposite. I think the fact that this boss shows up as an enemy takes away from the enemy more than it does from the boss. Um, I think that his whole fight, like, I think the way his fight is designed about fighting him on the bridge is really cool. Um, I really like the idea where you can, like, as the player think, hey, if I go up that ladder, I can get the plunging attack. Or, hey, I wonder if I could lure him up there. And you can lure him up and fight him on a wider arena. Um, I think this is one of the times where, like, again, there's kind of a thematic thing going on where that's really well designed to the player where you're up against a bull, but you're on this thin bridge and there's no way to avoid him, right? It's, it's a path you can't get off and you're facing the bull. So either you're going to face him down and just charge in, face him down head on. You're going to maneuver around him or you're going to lure him to better ground, right? And it, it really does kind of encapsulate the idea of Dark Souls as probably what is your first boss outside of the tutorial. And a lot of Dark Souls strategies are encapsulated in this boss fight. Like, any strategy you can think of that you fight every other boss with, it, with the exception of maybe just tanking through it, good old tank and spake, almost any of those strategies work on Taurus Demon. And I think that's really cool because Taurus Demon serves as like, he serves as like the lesson you learn on like all the different strategies that can be viable in this game. And I, yeah, I think that's, I think that kind of sums up why I really like him. Also, he's just, Kind of fun to fight. <laughs> Bed of Chaos. Oh boy. Um, would it be weird to say that I like Bed of Chaos more than Nito? I know a lot of people really hate Bed of Chaos, but I actually don't. I think Bed of Chaos is a cool idea, just needs better execution. So I guess maybe Bed of Chaos is like the queen of the met tier in that in that scenario. Yeah, I think that's a good place. I think Bed of Chaos is a really cool concept. Needed better execution. Um, I think the insta-kill is the only thing that really detracts from this boss. The fact that the gravity can kill you and that it takes 20 years to run back. Um, I like the idea that the progress you make on the boss is sustained between deaths. Um, it makes making practice saves a little harder, but I mean, that's not ever a worry when you're going from a game design, so... Yeah, I think this is a really cool... I think this is a good spot for her. I think that Bed of Chaos can be fun. There's cool strategies you can use with her. Um, 
I think we would all agree that if the boss didn't insta kill you via gravity, we would all like her more. I think we can I think we can all agree on that. Maybe if it was like I think if it was a little bit more like Ocarina of Time, uh I'm thinking of like the like the fight with Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time when you're playing uh lightning tennis. If anybody's ever played I I, I say if anybody's ever played that game, most of you have played that game. Um but for those of you who have played it, kind of imagine like when Ganondorf opens up the pit and you fall in and you have to like climb back up. I'm kind of imagining that. Like it would still be annoying, but like I think that would at least put her up a tier or two. Yeah, I don't know. She needs work, but I don't think she needs to be removed from the game. Um oh, we've got some we've got some real bangers here <laughs> lined up. We got our Tories, Calamite, Manus, Sanctuary Guardian, and the Gargoyles. Oh boy. Um, I, what do I think about Artorius? I think Artorius can go into the amazing tier. I think Artorius is a cool fight. There's not much to really say about Artorius other than I think he's cool. Is he my favorite boss in the game? No. Um, he might be in like my top five. We'll see. But I don't think I would really consider him to be like, a stand above fight, which I know is going to be kind of contradictory to a lot of what a lot of people think. I know a lot of people really like Artorius. Um, some people, in fact, a lot of people, this is their favorite fight in the entire game. Um, and then they'll go on to love fights like Fume Knight and Sir Alon, which really have that Artorius feel. Um, I think a lot of fights after Dark Souls 1 were really modeled after Artorius and really just worked to try and recapture the feeling of it, which I think it should in of itself explain why, not why, I guess, but should in of itself kind of give an idea with how good he is. Lore-wise, he's also really cool because you're always constantly hearing about Artorias throughout the lore and through character dialogue, stuff like that, and then it's kind of like you're finally facing him. It almost feels like a lot of Dark Souls kind of feels like you're the character that showed up to the anime with a tragic ending, but like after the anime is over. And if that were the case, I'd say Artorius is like the main character, right? Like Artorius was the main character of the anime. And now you're here to kind of like finish him up after the tragic ending. Uh, Calamy. Do I want Calamy to be an amazing? I'm putting Calamy in the great tier. Um, I don't feel like Calamy deserves the amazing tier only because as great of a fight as he is, I do think there are some things that kind of plague the Calamite fight. Um, I think his movement's a little bit weird. Um, and his hitboxes sometimes are really questionable. Like, sometimes he just kind of double hits you and you instant die, which is a little annoying. Um, I don't necessarily look forward to Calamite, um, but... He is still a really well-designed boss. I, I can't deny how cool and how well-designed he is. Also, ha the whole Hawkeye Goth thing. Like, if we're including that with Calamite, that, that cutscene is so freaking cool, dude. I don't think there's really much else for me to say about Calamite other than that. Um, oh, yeah. Another reason why he doesn't go into the, uh, the amazing tier. Um, the freaking Calamity sound effect is ear-piercing and physically pains me. So... From soft, please, just please. Why? Why did we do that? That that was so. Ah, my ears hurt just thinking about it right now. All right, Manus, 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 Manus. Uh, top top of the list. Manus is my is probably my favorite boss of Dark Souls One. There's only one boss in the game that really contests it. Um, and we'll get to we'll get to them in a minute, but. Manus is Manus in my eyes is the real final boss of Dark Souls. He is so freaking cool from like a lore standpoint, um which I know lore doesn't mean a lot, but like I only think lore will really matter in this list when it has a real impact on the character. And with Artorius, the lore matters, right? Nobody really cares when you're going through the game about the lore of Pinwheel, like you kind of show up at the pinwheel, you kill him, go, yeah, that was easy. 
I mean, Nito, you kind of show up and go, oh man, I this guy was in the cutscene, you know, that kind of gives him some brownie points. Um, you kind of show up and you see Sif, and it's like, oh, Sif is like guarding the grave where I have to go get the ring. Yeah, that's there, there's a little bit of lore there. Artorius, it's a, that whole anime protagonist thing. Manus, Manus is this, you, you walk in and you see the father of the abyss. You see the hand that yoinked you into another timeline. And just even from the cutscene, like from the second the cutscene ends to the moment the boss fight begins, you can kind of just tell that Manus is like, there's something special about him. Just even from like aesthetic. And I think all of that just being about his athet aesthetic. Wow, I can really talk today. His aesthetic really like, it really helps. And then you get to the actual fight, which is designed so well. Um, The fact that he doesn't have like a true grab, but he has like that combo move that just like it hits you and you just go, oh, damn, this is going to be tough. The second he hits you with that for the first time, it catches you so off guard. His magic attacks are so like the first time you see them. It is it is panic time for the player. Um, there's just so much about Manus that I love. His move set is really diverse, really cool, um, and it feels like when you beat him, you've earned it. And I think there's just so much about Manus that makes him an amazing boss fight. He's probably my favorite in Dark Souls. Um, yeah, only one other boss can really contest, and well, it, it, they they might surprise you. We'll, we'll when we get to him. Um, we'll go through these ones kind of quick, I guess. Uh, Sanctuary Guardian. Let's go. Let's put Sanctuary Guardian in the great tier. Uh, we'll do above Calamy. Um, the reason I don't put Sanctuary Guardian in the amazing tier is because there is one improvement I'd like to see. Um, there's one thing I, I, there's one issue I have with Sanctuary Guardian. And that is the fight is way too short. I don't know who on the dev team decided to give Sanctuary Guardian less health than Quelag. Um but I, I I think it definitely hurts him. I, I think it hurts the boss fight. Um I wish this fight lasted longer because I really like Sanctuary Guardian. I think his moveset is great. Um his fast, hard hitting style is really cool and it kind of serves as a cool introduction to what you should expect from the bosses in the dlc um and i really like his visual design as well um and he really just does serve as a really cool opening to the dlc like you're you start in that little tunnel and then you come out into this massive water covered arena fighting this lightning spitting manticore or i i think he's a manticore my my uh my monster lore is a little a little rusty at the moment, so forgive me if I'm getting that name wrong, but yeah, he's just really cool. I, I think that there's a lot of great things going for him, but unfortunately, the fight's just way too short. He's so freaking squishy that, like, the fight, if you come well prepared to his boss fight, he's gonna evaporate pretty fast. That's the problem, is he has, like, no health. Um, he kind of suffers from the same problem Pinwheel does. The only problem is he's way cooler than Pinwheel. So yeah, if he had more health, I think he would go into the amazing tier. But for now, he's, uh, well, I guess forever, because I sincerely doubt FromSoft is ever going to patch Dark Souls ever again. So yeah, I think he's going to sit in the great, uh, I think great tier is a great spot for him, but he is borderline amazing. Gargoyles is going to be another fight that goes into the amazing tier, though. Um, the first Bell Guardian fight, I think, is done super well. I think that the Gargoyles are a really fun fight. In fact, I like them more than Artorias. Um, I think they're done super well. Um, your first kind of 1v2 boss... At this point in Dark Souls, you kind of feel like you're not lost on your first playthrough. And when you approach the gargoyles, like, you know instantly that they are the guardians of the first bell. So there's kind of like, once again, there's kind of like this test feeling that you're getting when you're fighting them. And I think they achieve it really well, to be honest. Um, I think their moveset is really well designed. 
Apparently the FromSoft team thought that as well because they've been in like every game since this one. In fact, I, I want to say even, I want to say they were based off of Maneater from Demon Souls, but I could be wrong. Like, I like not, I, of course they're based off Maneater, but I think even like their moveset is really, actually no, Maneater has a different moveset that I'm, um, I'm on something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I think Gargoyles is definitely one of the really well done boss fights of Dark Souls. Um, and I don't think a lot of people would disagree with me on that one. Oh boy. We've reached Capra. Okay, so why Capra? No, no, no. Um, I want this boss fight removed from the game. Um, I don't think Capra Demon is too hard. Um, I really feel like Capra Demon was inserted, was like... The dev team went, hey, we need a boss fight here. Let's grab this enemy from the demon ruins and slap them here with a couple dogs. That's kind of that, that that's the feeling I get when I think of Capra Demon. I think uh, I there's something about like his arena. Obviously, there's the thing where his arena is too small. Everyone, everyone in the world agrees his arena is too small. Um, but I'll even go beyond that and say I don't even think that arena was like intended for Capra Demon. Um, I think when I, I mentioned earlier that I talked about this with my mods, but I, and I think I mentioned this when I was talking to them. But there's two there's two like feelings I get when I fight a boss. There is either a an arena was made and they put a boss fight in it, or they made an arena for the boss fight so either a boss fight was made and put into an arena or the, f the arena was made for the fight a great example of that is ONS it feels like the arena was made for that fight I feel like the gargoyles the arena was made for that fight that doesn't necessarily mean that bosses being put in a room is a bad thing um like Artorius feels like a fight that was put in a room like, they kind of wanted you to just have this blank room to fight Artorias in. They just kind of put him in there. I really feel like they picked a random room in Lower Undead Burg and said, yeah, let's insert a boss fight into it. And it didn't work out. I legitimately think that if there was maybe just a chest or a body at the top of the stairs in that room and we removed Capra Demon and just had it like that, I think this would be a much better fight. Um, I, I feel like if we removed this fight or even just moved him, just move him somewhere into the depths even. Like, make make the depths have two boss fights and just get rid of this. I Just get rid of this. No. This fight, this fight is not one I look forward to. <laughs> Ceaseless Discharge. Uh, cool in concepts. Um, but that's all I kind of have going for him. Uh, he's cool conceptually, and that's about it. Um, I don't think the cliffside fight where you attack him as he throws his arms onto the ledge really feels well done. In fact, he's one of the few bosses in this game that feels really video gamey, if that makes sense. Um, like, your fight, like, a lot of people really get pissed off about old iron king and talk about like yeah his his boss fight kind of feels like video game boss fight here right like oh he's the big scary guy with wings and horns that rises up out of the lava and he punches and leaves his arm on the spot for a really long time and you hit him while his arm is down that's what that's what i get from ceaseless discharge ceaseless discharge is old iron king except i would say probably worse um, I think he could be improved upon, and I like his inclusion in the game, but I, eh, I don't really feel anything about him beyond that. Centipede Demon, I'd say, though, is still pretty good. I like Centipede Demon. Um, I think the idea that you're fighting him, yeah, he kind of feels like that boss that was put in the arena. Like, they made this giant lava arena and they needed a boss fight to put into it. So they put the centipede demon in there. That's what it feels like to me. Um, but I really think that it works somewhat well. 
Um, I think that he w- fits the arena fairly well. Um, and I like the idea that you can get the ring off of him to access stuff in the arena early. I think Centipede Demon is probably... I'd say Centipede Demon is the best of the bosses in the Isolith area. Like, starting from Demon Runes forward, he is probably the best of that area. Um, I, I, I like Centipede Demon. I don't think he is, like, a great fight, but, like, I get to him and go, oh, yeah, Centipede Demon, this is, this is going to be uh, lots of fun, especially after the garbage I just went through, which, speaking of which, I see him on the end here. Let's go ahead and just get him out of the way now. Delete, get Fire Sage Demon out of the game, please. Let's, the, the game would be better without him. Uh, listen, I'm all, f- remember that whole thing I said about copy paste where you get the cool move set, like you take the same boss, give him the cool move set, make it feel impressive with asylum demon and stray demon. It was cool, but then you get to fire sage and you go, really this crap again? Like that, that's all I could, that, that's all I could say. Like. Fire Sage feels like the bad part of Elden Ring. The part where you you walk into the, the part where you walk into a room and you just go, ah shit, here we go again. He is the he is the incarnation. He, he is the living incarnation of how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> yeah, I just don't like Demon Fire Sage. Um, get him out, please. I I I do not. Do I, th- uh, we can do this. Which one's a worse offender? Capra Demon or Fire Sage? Uh, Fire Sage. Fire Sage is the worst offender. At least Capra Demon is, uh, at least Capra Demon is kind of, like, if they moved him into a different arena, I guess I'd be okay with him. I just realized that uh, none of these bosses are going in the delete tier, so I just realized our entire delete tier, the problems I have with them are like the problems I have with Elden Ring, <laughs> where it feels like they grabbed a late game enemy and shoved it in a room and called it a boss. And the other one is just like something that was cool the first like time or two starts to lose its shine just because it's in a new area. I just realized this is this is the Elden Ring tier right here. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, let's go with Priscilla. I think Priscilla and I think Priscilla and Gwendolyn are both going to go into still good. In fact, I'm going to put them here. Um, these I think both of these bosses can be described in the same fashion where I really like the central mechanic behind both of them. Um, the invisibility for Priscilla is really cool and the infinite hallway for Gwendolyn is awesome. Um, I don't think that they are so good that it's like, yeah, I love this fight, you know? Like, man, I'm really looking forward to fighting Gwendolyn this time. I think his boss fight is cool. I enjoy it, but it's not something I ever look forward to, you know? Um, it's just kind of like, oh yeah, cool, it's time for Gwendolyn. I also think that Gwendolyn is one of those boss fights where it's like the strategy never changed. In fact, I'm gonna put Gwendolyn over. Do I like Gwendolyn more than I like Four Kings? Or do I like, I might like Gwendolyn more than Four Kings, actually. I like Gwendolyn. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. Um, I think Gwendolyn is, like, fun, but the strategy for, for him never changes. And, yeah, I, I, I think the only thing that makes Gwendolyn lackluster is how stale of a boss fight Gwendolyn is. I think, I think if their boss fight had a, just a bit more dynamic to it, then I'd move them up a tier, but I think they fall just short. Um, but that's kind of, I guess that's kind of the downside of a gimmick fight is it does tend to limit how dynamic the fight will be. But I think Gwendolyn is probably the best gimmick fight in the game. Um, Priscilla, Priscilla is fun, um, but once the shroud is broken, it's not even really a boss fight anymore. It's just kind of an it feels like an overglorified enemy once the the mechanic is done. Um, that being said, I think the mechanic does tend to carry Priscilla um, a lot harder than most of these. I like on the, the invisibility alone and just aesthetic of the fight. 
like all that put together i think does tend to carry her above all of these this this row right here um yeah i i like i like priscilla and then we have Quelag, who is the only boss in the game that can contest Manus for my favorite in the whole series. Um, well, I well, in not for the whole series, my favorite boss in Dark Souls One. Um, I think Quelag is every like Quelag is everything a Dark Souls One boss should be. Um, she's intimidating. Um, aesthetically, she's really cool. Um, her arena is very fitting. I think that she has a fun, like, mechanic that is exploitable, but not to the point where it detracts from the boss, where you, if you hit her human body, it stunlocks her. Um, overall, I think she is just fantastic. Um, she is absurdly tanky, but I think that's a good thing, because... I don't know. There, there's there's something I like about her being so tanky. Um, she's tankier than Iron Golem and Sanctuary Guardian, um, which is pretty insane to think about. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I just really like Quelag, so I think that's where I'm gonna I think that's where I'm gonna leave her. Okay, so now looking at this list to kind of finish up things here, let's kind of rearrange this into. I'm going to read through this and then we're going to like kind of just rearrange things. Um, Capra over Fire Sage. Yep, that's fine. Ceaseless or ooh, Ceaseless or Moonlight. Um, Nito over Ch Bed of Chaos. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Gwyn over Bed of Chaos, I think is good. Uh, Bed of Chaos or Pinwheel. Pinwheel over Bed of Chaos, I think. Bed of Chaos over Moonlight Butterfly, I like that. Moonlight Butterfly over Ceaseless. Even. I think these two are pretty interchangeable. We'll do Ceaseless above Moonlight. Um, Centipede over Nido, yeah, we like that. Gaping over Centipede? Uh, yeah, Centipede over Gaping. We'll, we'll do that. Um... Priscilla versus Centipede. I'd say Centipede. Nah, I like Priscilla more than I like Centipede. Do I? Centipede is pretty cool. Centipede over Priscilla. Uh, Four Kings over Centipede. Yeah, that that's fitting. Uh, Gwendolyn over Four Kings. Yep. Uh, Seath above Taurus. Yeah, we like that. Stradium and above Seath. Uh, I'd say Seath would actually go kind of up a few spots. Calamite versus Seath. Which one do I like more? I'd say Seath above Calamite. I really like Seath. Like, I think Seath is really underrated. Um. Let's see. Asylum Demon over Sith. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, Sif or Iron Golem? I like Iron Golem more than I like Sif. I like Taurus Demon more than I like Sif. Uh, yeah, I think this lineup looks pretty good. Um, and then we have Artorius under Gargoyles. Yeah, I like that. Asylum Demon versus Gargoyles. Ooh. I would say, personally, I like Gargoyles more than I like Asylum Demon. Um, ONS over Gargoyles, yeah, that's fine. And then Quelag over ONS and Manus over Quelag. Okay, yeah. I think this is the, uh, I think this is how I would, uh, I would order things. So, uh, from left to right being, left being the top of the tier, right being the bottom of each tier. So, if we're gonna arrange at least how I'm feeling today, I don't know, depending on a day-to-day -day basis, I might feel slightly differently. But I think overall the tiers will always stay the same, uh, no matter what. I think the, this is what I'd put every boss, like every fitting tier for each of the bosses, no matter what. Um, but as far as like the more specific order, um, from least favorite to favorite, it would go Demon Fire Sage, Capra Demon, Moonlight Butterfly, Ceaseless Discharge, Bed of Chaos, Pinwheel, Gwyn, Nido, Gaping Dragon, Priscilla, Centipede Demon, Four Kings, Gwendolyn, Sith, Taurus Demon, Iron Golem, Stray Demon, Calamite, 
Seath, Sanctuary Guardian, Artorius, Asylum Demon, Gargoyles, Smo and Ornstein, Quelag, and finally Manus. That's how I would arrange my least favorite to favorite bosses in Dark Souls. And of course, you can see the tears now on screen. Um, I honestly had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I really, yeah, I think this is a good way that I would order all the bosses. I think challenge, if we were to do like, oh, how do I feel about bosses and challenge runs? Like that would obviously require different like challenges. Like I feel differently about Nido in Miracles only than I do in Armor of Thorns. Um, like if this was Armor of Thorns, a bed of chaos is going to the top for finally giving me a damn break. <laughs> But yeah, um, this is how I would arrange all the bosses in Dark Souls. Um, hopefully this answers some of your guys' question about how I feel about some of these boss fights. Um, if you guys agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you have other points to bring about any of the, uh, if you have any points that you want to bring up about the bosses, let me know in the comments. I'm, I, I do, I, I know I get a lot of comments on all my videos. It seems like, oh, how would Kyle ever go through all the comments on his videos? And I don't get every single one, but I do try to read every comment on my video, so... If you got something to say about any of these boss fights, or if you think I'm just stupid, I mean, feel free to tell me. Um, but yeah, I, I think this was a lot of fun. I think we're going to do this again for Dark Souls 2 sometime soon-ish. Um, and then when we're done with Dark Souls 3, we'll do it again for Dark Souls 3. Um, and then we'll have Bloodborne, we'll have Sekiro. Uh, I, I should probably do one for Demon Souls. Um, and then we'll do one for Elden Ring. That's going to be, we might do that in a live stream, um, and then just edit it down to a video. Uh, when I do the one for Elden Ring, I'm going to do all of the bosses. And when I say all the bosses, I mean like all like 100, whatever there are, whatever. I don't know. I don't even know if there are over a hundred bosses, but even it feels like that. Um, there, there's a lot of bosses in Elden Ring. Um, but yeah, I think after we're done with Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3... I think it would be fun to do a master list of all three games. And maybe when we do that one, maybe we can, uh, maybe I, I can see about inviting some of my, uh, fellow souls tubers slash streamers and we can do a fun little collaboration. We can all kind of rank them together. Uh, maybe we'll have a bit of shenanigans going out with that. I won't mention anybody by name because I don't want to feel like I'm volunteering anybody. Like I don't want anybody to feel like they've been voluntold for, for a video, but I don't know. That sounds like it could be a lot of fun. So. I don't know if you guys think that'd be cool if we uh, once we're done with Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, if we got somebody else on and invited some people on to maybe put together a master list between the three of us and, or the three of the three of us. Wow. The three games and <laughs> kind of seeing some clashing viewpoints. That might be fun. Yeah, well, we'll maybe maybe we'll see about that. I don't know. Either way, though, um, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't already, go ahead and bop that subscribe button really helps me out. We're getting closer and closer to 100k by the day, and I still can't believe we're, we've even gotten this close. And once we actually make it, I I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly. Probably, probably going to cry. I'll probably cry. Something like that. Either way, though, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out, um, watching this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, and as always, I'll catch you gamers on the flip side. Later!